This is the tree that was cut down that we used to mill up the lumber and stack it up. And then we took it to dry it so we could build us some tables. Here's our plans for our trestle legs. About 36 inches long, about 7 inches wide for this. Again, this is pre-mill up, rough cut lumber. So this is what we have to look at to get what we want to have. A little bit of honeycomb, but not until we mill them up. And then this is what it looks like on the inside. Boy, all those holes. We really have to figure out how to make that useful. These are the leg portions of the altar table. And they'll be arranged like that with a... This is red oak. And we were fortunate enough, a member had a neighbor that had a red oak he was cutting down and we were able to uh, gain access to that lumber and we had it dried. The challenge was we had it vacuum kiln dried which is a very fast method and some of the legs or some of the thicker parts of the wood, for example the eight quarter, had honeycombing and that's a process where the inside of the wood splits because it's dried too fast. Let me give you an example. And you can see all the legs where we have a black epoxy, and that was where the honeycombing had taken place in some of the internal part of the wood. And you don't always find it until you start to mill your lumber. So we use this as a feature in this particular table. And so the top was didn't have any honeycombing we're fortunate with that this is the glue up of the first half of the panel for the altar table these three boards there will be the second half we glue up each of the two panels for the top elvin's getting ready to cut uh, two inches off our edge of our table so we can uh, do a fold over for the edge treatment to make it appear thicker this is a technique that we're using to make the table top appear thicker. Our lumber is approximately about an inch thick, but we're gonna cut a two inch strip off two sides and then off each of the ends. We're gonna fold that piece underneath the table top and glue it, attach it, to give it the appearance that we have a nice thick two inch table top. So here's the tabletop after we fold it over and glued our edge treatment on. This is before the round over. So here's our tabletop with the uh, black Rubio Mono coat on it. So we have our first coat on there. And then over here on this side, we have our pieces parts. Those are yet to be done. And we're pre Finishing these because we're going to have mechanical joinery. We don't have to worry about glue sticking to it. So I'm going to put my template on my piece here and have the double-sided glue technique with blue painter's tape to be able to get this stuck to my piece. So I can use my template to route this. So we've got a nice tight fit. And put a couple drops in each four or five inches apart. Spray our back with a little accelerator. And make sure we get this positioned in just the right spot there so we have everything inside our <clears throat> so you take your piece with your template glued to the board and you want to cut it as close as you can to the edges because your router bit is only a 3 8 inch size and you want to route around the whole thing with minimal amount of waste or 
extra lumber that you're cutting off. Remember, I'm making four of these braces. All right, so now I'm gonna take my support arm piece and put roundovers on those. The roundovers on these support brackets are the same 3 8 inch roundover that I used on each of the other parts of the table legs and table top. Now for this table leg assembly, we decided not to use glue because of the wood direction changes between the leg braces and the legs and it would most definitely pop at some point in time. So we're using mechanical joints here. We're basically using a bolt and nut method to be able to bolt this together and keep it nice and tight. Now this is only a dry fit of our assembly. We don't have our bolts tight yet because we have to come back and finish painting the heads of our bolts and nuts. So this table is a trestle style where we have the legs have a support connecting at the bottom and we have some other joinery we'll make underneath here on the legs to be able to secure the top from the bottom to prevent racking. This was quite a undertaking as it took numerous times of filling with epoxy and CA glue and sanding and repeating the process until we got it far enough along to where it was smooth enough to use. So we have our leg assembly done in a dry fit. We have our mechanical joinery here and we're going to use dowel methods for joining our stretcher to our leg units. So we have some placeholder dowels in here now. So today's task is to glue those up with some oak dowels and then we'll cut them off flush to match the top of the leg. So after putting the stretcher in between the two leg units, we had to put our Rubio Monocoat under the brackets that will support the leg to prevent them from racking. This was the last part to complete the construction of our table. The last part to a completed table is leveling the legs so the table does not wobble. This method is trimming the high legs all to the same part and the two on the other end need a very modest trim as well and so once we have each of those trimmed we have a level table. In this next step we use a Dremel tool with a cutoff wheel to cut off the long bolts hanging outside of the nuts that we have that secure our table join ring. So after we cut those off, we'll come back with a little black paint and paint the ends of it so they'll match the rest of the coloring of the table. So I used a little micro crystalline wax polish on a tabletop. One little coat, you buff it, and boy, that's as slick as the baby's behind. Just look at the grain on this. This is absolutely fabulous. This is what you get with red oak. Wonderful grain on this red oak table. So if you liked our altar table build, consider giving us a thumbs up if you think we deserved it for all the work that we did. Want to see more of our videos, consider subscribing down below. And as usual, come back and see me real soon.